Pushing an empty shopping cart is much more easier than pushing a loaded shopping cart. Did anybody experience the same? Do you know why? Let's find out. Hello, welcome to Bright Side Science. So in the previous video, we have learned about the first law of motion. Newton's first law of motion predicts the behavior of objects for which all existing forces are balanced. When the forces are balanced each other out then, you can understand that the object will not accelerate. That is, object at rest stays at rest and the object in motion stays at motion. The first law gives the idea of force and inertia. Now, according to Newton, an object will only accelerate if there is a net or unbalanced force acting upon it. The presence of an unbalanced force will accelerate an object, changing its speed, its direction or both its speed and direction. And here comes the second law of motion also known as the law of force. This law predicts the behavior of objects for which all existing forces are not balanced. The second law of motion enables us to measure the force. Let us check the statement of second law. We can state the second law in two ways. Statement number one. According to the second law, the acceleration of an object is directly proportional to the net force acting upon an object and inversely proportional to the mass of an object and the change take place in the direction of force. Or we can also state the law as follows, that is statement number 2. The net force acting on an object is directly proportional to the rate of change of momentum of the object. The first statement is quite simple to express. We have stated the second law in words like this. The acceleration of an object acted upon by an unbalanced force is directly proportional to the net force that acts upon the object and inversely proportional to the amount of mass that the object possesses and this acceleration is in the same direction as the net force that acts upon the object. So what exactly is meant by the net force? Well, it's sometimes referred to as the vector sum of all forces. Like any forces, it is a vector with a magnitude and a direction. So, the second law claims that the acceleration is proportional to the net force. Now, let's look at the data here in the data table. One thing we notice when we look at the table is that the net force in row 2 is twice the value of net force in row 1. And what happened when we double the value of net force from 20 Newton to 40 Newton? It causes the acceleration to double as well from 2 meter per second square to 4 meter per second square. Then look at the row 3 of net force. Here the value is thrice the value of net force in row 1 and it caused a tripling of acceleration from 2 to 6 meter per second square. And finally, when we look into the row 4 at net force, then we can find that the value is half the value of rho 1. And when we half the value from 20 Newton down to 10 Newton, this caused the acceleration to be halved as well. That is, from 2 meter per second square to 1 meter per second square. From these actions, we can understand that the acceleration is directly proportional to the net force because by whatever factor the net force is changed, then the acceleration is also changed by the same factor. This verbal statement can be expressed in the equation as follows. A proportional to F. The symbol between the A and F is the proportional sign. Now, let's look at the acceleration and mass relationship. So, let's look at the data given. Here, 
when we look at row 1 and 2 of mass m what we can observe is that the row 2 mass value is 2 times the value of row 1 it causes the acceleration value to be half it changes the acceleration value from 12 to 6 so doubling the mass halved the acceleration value and when the mass value becomes three times the original value what happened to the acceleration yeah the acceleration become one third of the original value and look when mass is half the original value the acceleration doubled right by this we can realize that the acceleration is inversely proportional to mass that is by whatever factor mass is changed acceleration is also changed by the reciprocal factor and this verbal statement can be written in equation as follows a proportional to 1 by m so far we talked about the newton's second law with two proportionality statements right like a proportional to f net and a proportional to 1 by m by combining these two statements we get the equation in the form a proportional to f net by m f net is nothing but the net force and m is the mass okay now let's move on the second statement of the second law that is the net force acting on the object is directly proportional to the rate of change of momentum of the object okay well what is momentum momentum is a property associated with moving bodies the amount of motion encompassed within a moving object refers to as momentum momentum is the product of mass and velocity it is a vector quantity that is momentum p is equal to m v so unit of momentum is kilogram meter per second when a heavy body and a light body move with the same velocity heavy body has greater momentum why because momentum is defined as a product of mass and velocity right so heavy body has greater momentum comparing the light body example when a train and a bus move with the same velocity the train will have very greater momentum when two bodies of equal mass move with different velocities the body with greater velocity will have greater momentum example consider a bullet fired from a gun and a stone of the same mass thrown as bullet has very high velocity it will have greater momentum so how can you change an object's momentum to its force consider a body of mass m moving with velocity v let f be the force acting on the body for a time delta t so that the velocity changes to v plus delta v so here the change of momentum is equal to m into v plus delta v minus m v that is equal to m delta v so the rate of change of momentum is equal to m delta v by t that is equal to m a how acceleration is the rate of change of velocity with respect to time right so here delta v by delta t is equal to a when delta t turns to zero so according to the second law force is proportional to the rate of change of momentum that is f proportional to m a or we can write it as f is equal to k m a where k is the proportionality constant 
The value of k is made equal to 1 by defining the unit force. That is, if m equal to 1, a equal to 1 and f equal to 1, then k equal to 1. Therefore, f is equal to m a. That is, force is equal to mass into acceleration. It is a vector quantity and its SI unit is Newton. So, in the beginning of the video, we have claimed that pushing an empty shopping cart is much more easier than pushing a loaded shopping cart. Why? Because the full shopping cart has more mass than the empty one. This means the more force is required to push the shopping cart.